Hello, hello. Happy Valentine's Day, guys. It's um, noon or 12.01. I'm a little late. Um, we're going to work with some IOD molds and paper clay today. How are you guys doing? I'm going to just find myself while people are tuning in. Okay, there I am. All right, I hope you can see me good. There we go. All right. So um, what I have in front of me, um, I don't know if you guys remember, but um, a few weeks ago we did a um, sample board, but mainly, mainly I was just demoing the um, painted transfer on it. And uh, the demo board sold. I don't know, it was, it was supposed to be my, my sample board for the shop. And of course, when you put something in your shop that says not for sale or with no price, people just have to have it. So um, I'm really, I'm surprised and happy that it's sold. Um, really craning my neck here. Hey, Margaret. Um, but anyway, so I need to make a new one. So I thought, well, we'll just start from the um, beginning process and make a whole new one so you guys can see how I did the whole board. So. And it did take quite a, a while to to make, but it's a fun process. Last time I used the um, casting resin, this time I'm gonna use paper clay, so you guys can just watch along with me and know how to use it. I'm sure if, if you've already done um, the molds with the paper clay, then let me know. Um, this is what I'm gonna be using. Uh, this is just from the local craft store. Um, yeah, I find this works uh, pretty well. Uh, I typically use the IOD clay, uh, but right now we're waiting on a new batch. So, and it should be out by the end of this month. So um, I'll be using that clay as soon as it's in. But this is what I'm using now. It's a nice, it's, it's kind of damp, it's not crumbly, and we're gonna go ahead and mold and glue right on. That's the way I like to do it. It still is going to crack and shrink a little bit. Good afternoon, Margaret and Sissy and Terry and Susan. How are you? All right, so look what I'm starting with. You can't see the ends because I'm too close, but this is a piece of plywood that is already pre-cut. And it's from Home Depot, which is just the local hardware store that we have that has this stuff pre-cut. Um, it's just quarter inch plywood, two feet by two feet. And it's nice and smooth on the sides. And I'll, when I paint it up, you won't even be able to tell it's plywood because it'll all be painted around the mold. Okay, so let's get started. How are, how's everybody doing today? I wanna know um, who celebrates Valentine's Day? I might be a humbug, I have my own opinions on it, but what are yours? <laughs> you guys go out and get coffee get um you can tell I haven't finished my cup of coffee do you guys go out and get coffee for Valentine's Day you should always start your day that way <laughs> but do you do flowers and candy and all that uh, go out and, and spend money on a big dinner kind of thing um, I feel like I have a very different view of Valentine's Day in my 50s than I did when I was in my teens and 20s and maybe even my 30s all right, I'm trying to decide what to do. So the um, molding here is gonna go, I'm gonna put it all the way around the edges of this board so it looks kind of like a frame. And the last one I did, I did, um, I used a lot of the classic elements and um, tons of like leaves and feathers and acorns and kind of did a theme. So I wanna kind of do a theme now. I don't wanna do it just random. And I'm thinking I wanna put the bunnies and the roosters in something different. So I'm going to use this mold and mold out some of these right now. Cheryl, yeah, well, if, if your husband taking the day off and working on projects, are they projects for you? Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. Does that count? That's kind of where, that's kind of where I'm at with it. Um, and yeah, it sounds like other people, not so much. A card is nice. I, this is what I think. In my, so I'm just kneading the clay a little bit to um, kind of not soften it up, but mold it so that I'm not just taking a chunk and you can take a chunk and press it in, but I'm chatting. So I guess this is, I'm going to put it right into my bunny here. 
But I remember, and tell me if you can relate to this, in my teens and in my 20s, Valentine's Day, it felt like, if you were single, it felt like something to make you feel bad. And I was, it was always a reason to commiserate with other single friends or cry <laughs> or just feel like I was, nobody loved me, you know? It was awful. It, it, it's like, I felt like it was targeted to make people feel bad. And you know what? Now that I have kids that are teenagers, I am kind of feeling like, um, like that was not something that was just me or just for the 80s. Um, and also, you know, the price of flowers goes up. I'd rather have flowers every other day of the week than have roses that cost three times they normally do on Valentine's Day. So I call this a Hallmark holiday and try to tell my kids, you know, you don't wait until Valentine's Day to tell somebody you love them or to give them flowers or candy. And I always, it's kind of a, tra a tradition that I go to the grocery store on the 15th and buy all of the Valentine's Day candy, 50% off and just bring home a bunch of hearts for everybody to munch on. So that's what I think of Valentine's Day. All right, so I just did my bunny. This clay is um, kind of wet. They're all different kinds. This one is a little damp, but I have used it. Um, I have used it before, actually. I made some of these last week and they dried nice and crusty and a little bit. Um, they actually didn't crackle very much. This clay doesn't, this clay doesn't crack as much. All right. Hi, Kelly. Ooh, cool. They're, so your husband's building a coffee table and shelves for your bathroom. I wish my husband liked to do stuff like that. He does not. Um, he's not handy. He's a computer person, uh, which I have no skill at. All right, so the um, there's my first little bunny. He's so cute. All right, I've got so if you, I've got a little bit of the um, extra here. I'm just gonna take it off. Is that extra round? No, that's the part of his leg. All right, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna make a couple and then I'm gonna glue them right on. What I like to do with the paper clay is glue it is glue it right on. Maybe I'll do three chasing each other. What do you think? Um, and then it will stop the shrinkage a little bit, but it's still gonna crack. So if you like really smooth, then the amazing casting resin is probably what you want to use because. I'm going to show you some nightstands that I put them on in a bit and I usually if I do it on a piece of furniture as molding just because of how hard it dries and you know versus having paper on there I'll use the amazing casting resin and that comes out nice and smooth but your paper clay usually is going to crack so that looks more like old world or like a antique piece of molding or furniture or something with a little crackle on it. All right, so I love, so the new molds, for those of you who haven't used the new IOD molds, they have this little lip. I don't know if you could see, there's a little lip around each one, which raises it up a little bit. And so when I go over the back to smooth out my clay, it's nice and flat. So that when I, which, which gives you, when you take this off, back is going to be nice and flat which gives you a better direct 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 um, contact back to back contact with whatever you're gluing it on oops I lost his head either I lost his head or I never put clay in his head all right let's just easily fixed I'm going to put that right in there it'll stick to the clay that's in there the headless bunny Kelly, you've been wanting to see these being done. You know what, they are really easy. Um, that said, there are a lot of different um, mediums that you could use in them, and that is what makes them a little bit, you know, one medium might be more difficult for you to use than another. I have actually really liked the IOD paper clay and not had any problems with it uh, at all, except that some of them that I have seen around, you have to look at the expiration date because some of them are quite old. And the ones that are really old, if they've been opened up, you know, they do have a date if they've been opened up or if they're just, 
you know, a year or two old. They may have dried out and they're crumbly. So if you have one like that and it's IOD and you have a crumbly one, please um, bring it back to the stockist that you bought it from. And I'm sure that they, you know, IOD stands behind its products. It will be replaced. Okay, the leg is falling off this bunny. It's fallen off twice. And it could be because of the way I pushed it into the mold, but it's clay, right? So I am just gonna, let's see. I'm gonna just put that together. And actually when I glue it on, you won't even be able to tell. It looks a little funny. Let's, let's do some glue now so I don't need to worry about. So um, just about any glue is gonna work. When I am using wood, and paper clay. I just use my wood glue. My favorite wood glue is Tight Bond. There's a few different kinds. Um, I have like two or three of these filled ones, that, so this is what I'm using, but there's also one that is a gel glue, which is if you're putting it on something and you're not laying flat, like if you're doing it on a piece of furniture and it's vertical, that glue is great for that because it'll stick it and it won't slide. For this, it doesn't matter. I'm using what I have. Wood glue works great on this. Now when I do epoxy onto furniture, the epoxy molds, I um, do that with um, a two-part epoxy gel glue, or I will use um, like a super glue or gel or so something that is more quickly bonded. And they usually say on them that they're good for plastic, resin, wood, um, but I find those work better than the wood glue on the resin. At least this one, maybe the thick one. All right, his little leg's falling off too. All right, so I'm just brushing the glue right on. Let's see, I'm gonna, let's, let's see. I'm gonna start kind of in the middle. Now this board right now is naked, except that I sprayed some um, shellac over it. The reason I sprayed shellac over it is because I'm going to paint it and it's got grain and knots and last time I didn't do that and I just had to go back and prime it after because the you know the knots and everything showed through my paint. So just like any furniture or anything that you're doing, if you're doing a light color over um, a dark board or a board with knots, you need to seal those so that it doesn't soak through your paint. All right. I'm a handy person, thank you, am I? I, Jean, I have so many different projects and different, and different uh, stages of needing repair in here, you know. All right, so let's see, I am gonna, I think I'm gonna do three bunnies across the bottom here. And look, his leg came off, but I can attach it separately. And this hardens pretty well. This will um, this will harden nicely overnight. Now, if um, if you do these and they crack a little too much, and you don't like the you don't like all the cracking, or uh, they separate because they you know it's paper, so it's going to shrink. I'm going to do one more bunny, then we're going to move on. Um, then you can go back and you can use like a caulking. Um, I think it's called DAP. Don't use silicone or sil um, yeah, don't use silicone. I have used silicone before in other projects and I know for sure you don't want to be using it with, a, with this because it'll make a mess. Um, so you just want to get like a regular caulking and you can fill in all of the cracks, um, all of the spaces, whatever you didn't like. I don't do that because I like things to look um, homemade and not perfect and if I'm going for more perfection I just choose a different material than the clay all right so this is pretty fast happy Valentine's Day Leanne hi Sandy Ooh, I keep I don't know what I'm looking at but I keep missing his ear um, also while I'm working on this, I've got this um, closed up and it's already starting to dry. Typically, I would leave it in a, um, in a plastic bag. Uh, or 
The other thing people do is put baby wipes over it or a wet paper towel because you want to keep it damp so it doesn't dry out while you're working. All right, you see that all? All right, it made a mess around it, but I don't care because I'm messy. Da, da, da. Okay, window caulking might work good. Um, is it called window caulking, Jean? I don't know. I know when you go to the hardware store, there are a million different kinds of caulking <laughs> to choose from. Because I have, it's one of those um, aisles of the store where if I need something, I'm always standing there just like staring blankly for a really long time. All right. There's another bunny. And I'm gonna glue him right on. And then, um, is there any that any particular mold that anybody's been wanting to see? I'm gonna start working on, kind of working around my board after the three bunnies. Um, and I don't know what I'm gonna do. So if there's any you want to see, let me know. And I can actually show them. To, I have them all here, so I can show them to you and tell you what they are. that bunny and I must be bending it wrong because the leg keeps coming off but these are these are very detailed I know you can't see it no matter how close I put it to the camera but um, they have you know there's some texture to the bunnies and to you know all of these they just have great detail they're nice and deep okay so those are glued right on there let me show you the um, yeah, Fleur de Lis, messy. I think messy is good too. Um, yes, I will tell you what, what the molds are. That's a great thing to do. And then we can pick what we want to put on. Okay. Okay. So, um, gosh, I'm blanking on the one that I'm using, what that one is called. Let's move on to, this is Classic Elements. I'm forgetting which camera I'm using here. So that's Classic Elements. And I'm... I want to show you, I'll wait until I'm done so I don't have to redo the camera, but I used um, this part right here and um, this part on a nightstand that I did last week. I don't know if you guys saw the video. Um, I was doing two nightstands. Um, I had to put like a back piece on it and I wanted to put some molding on it. So I made it out of epoxy, glued it on, it's all painted and waxed. And I just want to show you what that looks like because um, normally I, um, what I use these on myself is on furniture. So, so um, that's classic elements. I'm hoping I can remember what they're all called and I'm, as I'm pulling them up. This is um, Laurel. And that has the bees and the crowns. And I did, um, I used a lot of this one on the last sample board that I did. And the bees are amazing. I actually, um, when I did the bees, I used gilding wax on them at the end. And the gilding wax, you know, I just hit it with the high spots and you could see the veining. That's how detailed they are. Really cool. Okay. This is Sea Sisters. So these are huge. So these are about seven inches, maybe longer. These are big and they're amazing painted. And um, I'm not gonna add it to my bunnies cause it doesn't really go, but I'm gonna have to do a project soon with this one. So that's Sea Sisters, that's the mermaids. This is Wings and Feathers. I used a lot of this one layered up on my last board. Gorgeous, gorgeous vein in great detail wings and feathers and the acorns are the acorns on this one nope there's acorns on another one that i love i use i'm in new hampshire so the acorns were apropos okay this is swags again big great detail um the brand is iron orchid designs and you can buy them on my website at serendipity.house Okay, this is the cherub mold. Again, huge. And then there's um, two of these so that um, what a lot of people did, this came out right before Christmas, is they put them um, back to back and made ornaments, like hung, you know, molded back to back. 
like this and then put a string in the middle of them. Great ornaments. Um, and then this is the classics that I showed you. So my gosh, what is this one called that I'm using? I'm totally blanking out. Susan, are you still there? It's not classic elements. Laurel, wings and feathers. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Who remembers what this one's called? I am totally blank. Is this Fleur de Oh, this is the Fleur de Lis one. I think I said that in the beginning. Duh. Duh, Fleur de Lis, because that's a big Fleur de Lis in the middle. And this has the, the um, acorns, which are beautiful. All right, so what am I going to use? So what I'm um, using is, um, <laughs> I'm getting this all in my hair. I'm using the Creative Paper Clay. And I bought this one actually, you can just get it at the craft store. It's pricey. I would say um, bring a coupon when you go to get it. Um, and I'll be using the IOD clay as soon as the new batch comes out. All right, so let's make a couple more. And then I'm gonna actually um, put a little paint on them while they're still wet. So what is any, I'm gonna actually grab paint. Will you tell me what you want me to mold? Um, I mean, I'm thinking something around the edges here. Let me grab a little thing of paint. Are really awesome um, I think I'm gonna use some if nobody has any suggestions here with the bunnies so I want something that comes around this corner right here um, I think they harden enough for furniture Leanne um, but I'm worried look I, I did this one a week ago They're going to be harder with, I mean, it's, it's paper. I think if you're doing furniture that you should use, um, the resin, the, the, um, casting resin. That's just my personal, I sell all my furniture. Um, I don't know what's going to get bumped. I would hate for that to get, um, chipped off. If it's like on the front of a drawer and somebody's moving the drawers, it could easily get chipped off. Um, you know, it's fragile. How about this piece right there? Let's do that. Ooh, the laurel. Great minds, Sandy. Great minds. Um, I love this one. All right. I am, there we go. I had comments coming up, so I couldn't see what you guys, all right, so can you see how I'm doing this? I'm just taking a lump of clay. Yeah, thank you for the hair comments. I got my hair colored yesterday. Um, I need to have my roots done because my roots get really gray. So I had my roots done and then I had to pull the color right through. Um, and when she finished, I, my hair is so dark. It's like close to black, but it's only a semi-permanent color. And um, I'm not really used to it. And when I, when I got home yesterday, my hair was also really straight. It was straightened. And um, my family was saying I looked like Snape. And you know, I kind of got it last night when I was all, when I was all pale with my dark hair. <laughs> I was like, I couldn't figure out what character I looked like. That was it. Pale with black hair. All right, I definitely used too much in there. See how much I'm pulling off. So I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna put that to save it. Actually, I'm gonna put this whole thing in here. I want to keep it dry. I mean, I want to keep it covered so it stays wet. You know what I mean. All right, let's pull this right off here. All that extra. All right. Waste not, want not. Yeah, this clay is pretty wet. It's one of the wetter ones I've used. 
All right, let's get that right off of there. You okay? The root, the casting resin brand I use. I can show you the box. It's called um, Amulite. Amazing casting resin. I might have some on my website. I might have a couple boxes left, um, but I stopped carrying it because um, there are a lot of places that if you got a coupon, you can pretty much buy it at wholesale cost anyway. So, um, so you know, I really couldn't beat the price. I think I've tried to match it on my website just to get rid of the ones that I have left. They are in a pink or purple box. All right, so I am gonna put that right down here on the corner. See that? That's a little too far. Mm -hmm. All right, and I've got a little, a little that came up that I don't want, but otherwise that looks very good. All righty, and I think I'm gonna glue that right down. So I'm gonna just flip that over. You know, it's, it's fragile. I'm just using my tight bond glue, paper, wood. It's what I use on uh, mending all of my you know, like if I have to glue, clamp and glue some furniture, that's what I use. That's my favorite glue. I can already tell this might break in the middle here when I pick it up. You know, once this is painted though, it'll be on there really well. You know, like I said, as long as somebody's not, as long as you don't drop, drop it or smash it, literally, that this isn't gonna break doesn't crumble once it doesn't fall apart once it's glued you know I have one actually that I did like three years ago and never sealed because it was just an old frame I was playing on and it's fine that said I could very easily grab a screwdriver or grab something and break it all up all right so yeah they broke so because it's still pliable I am going to see how I just made that. I just kind of molded that more like I wanted it to go straight up the board. So I'm gonna just make sure it has a good adhesion and it should have a good adhesion because of the new lip. I am gonna paint it while it's still damp so I don't want any extra glue to get mixed in. All right. How pretty is that? What do you like? What do you think? All right, so I need one on the other side. Can you spell the resin? I'll show you the box of resin. All right, so the resin that I use it's this amazing casting resin by Amulet. It's a two-part resin. It comes with um, these little cups and you do equal amounts of both. Stir it in, put it in your mold. As you are, you know, within five minutes, you're gonna see it start to turn white. It'll be clear and then it starts to turn white as it dries and then this is what it dries like. So this is one of the cherubs. Okay, look, it's resin, it's not. Now, when it's still warm, or if you go back with like a little, a heat gun or something, you can bend them like you can these. Like I, when I did, I did some of these on the nightstand behind me and I wanted them to go around a certain curve while it was still wet. When I used the resin, I was able to bend it so that it didn't curve as much. So you can manipulate them if they're still, you know, while they're still soft. They sat up in about 10 minutes and they're probably, you can probably still manipulate them within like 20 minutes and then glue it down with, um, I don't use a wood glue for these because I found that they don't stick as well. I use um, like a, a gel super glue kind of thing or a two part epoxy glue. Loctite is my favorite um, brand of that, but everybody has their favorites. All right, 
I'm gonna put one more of those laurels over on the other side. It's got one in mirror image. And then I'm gonna start painting these and show you that actually bunnies are starting to crack a little bit. All right, so hopefully Leanne, you could see, um, you were able to see the name of the resin. Uh, I will put it, whoops, I wanna do the mirror image. I'll put it in the comments after so you can um, see that in case you missed it. Uh, I think it's about 15 or $20 for a small thing of it and it does a lot. And that's what I use on my furniture. And actually I've, um, I've got a whole stack of them that I've made up ahead of time because you know, the last time, the last time I did this, I didn't, wasn't sure what I was doing and I wanted, I just cast a bunch and then laid a design out. That was really the easiest thing to do, um, you know, when you're using the resin. All right, nice and flat there. I'm getting better, I'm put, not putting on too much, less than last time. Have you guys tried this? I know some of you have molds, you've ordered molds from me. I know some of you have definitely been using these. Okay. We're gonna take this one out, glue it on, and just throw a little paint on there. I like to paint it when it's wet. You could do either way though. I'm getting it all stuck to my hands. All right. You can see where, so I've got a two foot square board here. This takes a while to do a whole board, you know. I'm certainly not gonna bore you and do the whole board and have you watch, because it's just the same thing over and over, but when it's done, incredible. It's hard to believe when you're finished that you started with a piece of plywood for sure. Okay, let's glue that on. So if you have any like stray pieces that look like they didn't come out of the mold clean, you can just go ahead and clean that up. I don't know, what do other people, um, do you guys use paper clay for anything else? Uh, I don't do a lot of crafts, so I use the IOD products, but like I said, usually it's on my furniture. Um, so I, I just don't do a lot of crafty kind of things. So I don't know what else, like what else do you use the paper clay for? jewelry making or um, I'm not even sure this this kind of stuff's all new to me because I furniture and home design is kind of my thing and and um, some of the Ida OD products kind of venture over into more of the crafty you know people are doing things with them that I would never think of just because I don't do do that kind of stuff um, but fun stuff all right, let's see. One, two, three. Now, I really just want it to kind of match the other side. Be the same distance away. Okay, and then just, now this is so detailed and thick that a little push down, you're not gonna ruin your design. Oh, I just realized you guys couldn't see, but I'm just doing the All right, so I think that's down far enough. You would love, um, Gerilyn, the new ones are quite different than the older ones. They're, they're much bigger, for starters. The, the new molds uh, are larger. And um, do I have an older one to, um, so the new molds are larger. They're deeper, they have more detail, and then they have the lip to help you get it off evenly. So um, yeah, they're different. They're, they're, they are much improved in my opinion. All right, now let's put a little bit of paint. Um, I grabbed Fancy Farm Girl. I just grabbed what was open. I gotta grab a brush, sorry guys. close by. All right, 
my brush, which actually has Fancy Farm Girl on it, and it was sitting in the sink soaking. It's still a little dirty. This is my Klingon brush. I pretty much use those for everything. I love my Klingons. Well worth the investment if you're a furniture painter. I don't think I'd buy it just for crafts, but if you're a furniture painter and you paint frequently, um, it never loses a hair, a bristle. It never rusts and they kind of self-clean if you just put them in water. All right, so I'm gonna start. I guess I don't need that much paint. I'm using DIY paint, which is the paint that I sell. It is clay and I'm kind of dappling this on so I can get all in between. Um, it's clay, it's water-based clay, chalk, mineral, all natural, doesn't smell, highly pigmented, amazing paint. You could do this with any kind of paint, it's just the paint I use. Um, I'm gonna dapple around these and then show you guys close up the detail that you could see. I just wanna get it in all those little grooves. I am not normally a person who paints with a lot of green. Hey, Serafina, how are you, honey? Um, Serafina, um, do you have a business page, Serafina? She has been um, making amazing things with the Sea Sisters molds. Um, so if she does have a business page and she drops it in here, go check it out or go check out her Sea Sister stuff because um, I was, you know, I didn't want to mix it with the bunny today, but it's pretty, it's pretty amazing mold and you don't realize just how cool it is till you see people using it and then painting it. All right, so any of the stuff that I'm using here, except for like the plywood board um, and actually the clay right now I don't sell, um, but the other stuff you can find on my website, serendipity.house. So I started to say I'm, um, I must be dying for spring because um, I've been painting with a little bit of green and normally I am like a strictly paint everything blue person, blue, white, gray. Those are like my, my cool color tones. That's my thing. And I've been kind of drawn to doing green lately. So of course we got a foot of snow yesterday. So the springtime's not coming any time soon. All right. This one might be a little damp for me to be pouncing on it, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And then um, I'm also gonna be layering. So because this is a sample board, I wanna use different products that I sell because it's gonna be in the shop and it's gonna say, you know, wanna create this? You know, here's what I use, we sell this here. Um, so in the, in the center, I have to do something else. I was thinking another painted transfer, but I don't know. So if you guys have any ideas, it can be anything IOD. I have everything. All right. It's hard getting in those little areas there. Snow is cool. Then it's cold snow. Um, if it's cold there, if your door is open, a little sunny here today. I had my door open earlier, actually, because I, <laughs> because I sprayed the, um, I sprayed the shellac, and I was like, <coughs> <laughs> so I had to open the door. But it's, but I'm on Main Street, and it's really loud with the truck. So if I, um, if I kept it open, you guys wouldn't be able to hear me. All right. Well, let me put that aside and zoom my camera a little bit. That is really like. I'm gonna actually try to take take this off without making too much of a whoops. Sorry about that, I dropped, dropped the phone. All right, so here, close up on the, ooh, rotate your phone. Um, I'm trying to see if I could do like a backwards, but I, I look like I can't turn my screen around. I'm sorry, guys. So here's the bunnies painted. And then um, the laurel on the corner, which. Obviously I can't get it where I need to. Okay, I'm gonna unplug that. 
and then this is what I want to show you. Okay, so see this. So this is on a nightstand. This right here is a piece of the um, classic elements mold, and it's more of a, um, a little bit more of a U shape, but I stretched it out. This is classic elements. It's the beading glued on. So this is with resin, it's nice and hard because it's on a piece of furniture. I've got um, layers of paint and dark wax in there right now um, that still needs to be buffed off. But you can see, that's the whole thing here. Um, you can see that hopefully, it, you know, when the, the whole thing is done and buffed that it looked like it belonged there. There was an empty piece here and I had to build something. And so I just used the IOD molds to do it. All right. I think that's about it because I'm going to um, continue. Um, I'm going to continue molding, and um, yeah, I'm gonna, I was trying to see if you guys have any questions. I'm going to get continue molding and do this board up, and then um, I'm going to show you what it looks like and decide what to put in the middle. And I just wanted to say hello, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Catch the beginning if you didn't catch it. Um, tomorrow, go buy all the chocolate. That's 50% off. <laughs> and buy yourself some flowers that are less expensive than today. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. You can find the products on my website. I'm trying to decide what it is I have coming up uh, next to do. I, a, I think I need to do some milk painted benches. So that might be uh, what we're working on um, next week. I'll do it live on milk paint. So think of the kind of questions that you have. I love milk paint. It's very unpredictable. Um, if you've never tried it, I don't know, maybe watching me and seeing what you end up with will make you feel adventurous. All right, have a great day, you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Love you. Finish.